Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about the concept of ionic bonds and then how uh, we try to determine the strength of an ionic bond which is called a lattice energy and a particular series of reactions that we use that make up a cycle, a thermodynamic cycle called the born harbor cycle and that's how we can get at the value of the lattice energy which is the strength of the ionic bond. So an ionic bond is basically what the term we use to represent the electrostatic force, the force that is between a cation and an anion, that's what we call the electrostatic force, that holds these ions together in an ionic compound. Okay, So the strength of that uh, electrostatic force is what we're trying to quantify and that's what we call the strength of the ionic bond. Now here's a brief review of what ions are and how we see them Then this is all coming from um, the quantum chapter, chapter 7, which is the chapter we just talked about and hopefully you can kind of look back at your notes and review some of these concepts as well and there shouldn't be anything new. First off, um, atoms uh, form ions because it lowers their energy. So as a result of forming an ion, usually an atom uh, releases some energy. As a result, it goes to a lower energy state. And that, of course, is more stable from uh, the way we've des been, been describing energy of different uh, systems. Now, we know that in the periodic table, if we're just looking at atoms on their own, the lowest um, the energy, the, the atoms that have the lowest energies are the noble gases. They happen to have lower, the lowest energy because there's something unique about the way their electrons are arranged in the orbitals. And so the atoms of other elements try to look like the atoms of noble gases by either losing some electrons or gaining some electrons. When they lose some electrons, they form cations right? And cations tend to be formed by elements uh, in which their valence electrons have very low ionization energy. In other words, it's pretty easy to rip off this valence electrons from the valence shell. So it's very easy to take them away. There's very weak interaction with the nucleus. And these type of um, elements, as we talked about in chapter 7, tend to be what we call metals. So, for example, group 1A elements starting from lithium, sodium, potassium, those tend to form ions, cations, sodium ion, as you know, Na+, potassium ion, group 2A transition elements, all of these tend to form um, metallic cations. And then we have anions, which are kind of on the opposite side of the periodic table. These are formed by elements that have, instead of ionization energy, they have very exothermic electron affinity energy. So remember, electron affinity is a process that represents a gain of an electron. So when you gain an electron, you have, usually you uh, lower the energy state of the system. So these anions, when they form anions, they get to, get to a lower energy. And as a result, uh, some species like to form these anions, particularly the nonmetals. So, for example, all the halogens, you know, fluor fluorine, chlorine, they tend to form the anion form, which is fluoride, uh, chloride, and so on. And then oxygen can form this oxide anion, O2 minus, and, and vice, and, you know, and there's some other ones that we talked about in chapter 7. Now, once the cations and the anions form, they have charges on them, positive and negative, and they can then be attracted to each other, and that's an electrostatic attraction, attraction between charges, and they form electrically neutral compounds. These are what we call ionic compounds, of course. So sodium has a charge of plus one, the cation. Chloride has a charge of negative one, the anion. They combine together to form the formula NaCl, only one and one, because there's only um, the charges are plus one and negative one. However, if you have magnesium and chloride, magnesium tends to form a plus two cation. This is in the group 2A uh, in the periodic table. 
chloride it's a halogen it turns to form uh, a chlorine is a halogen it turns to form chloride which is just a negative one so in order to form an electrically neutral compound you have to have two chloride ions to balance out the charge on the magnesium ion which is plus two okay and you can see how this aluminum oxide ion uh, uh, aluminum oxide ionic compound form because as you can see in this case the total charges of the aluminum and the oxide balance each other out you get a plus six total here you get a negative six you get a zero overall okay now remember that we have a special name for these ions that have the same electron configuration as the noble gas atoms these ions are said to be isoelectronic with the noble gas so we call these ions the isoelectronic series because they're all isoelectronic with a particular noble gas okay so for example let's say we look at neon which is a noble gas that has 10 electrons remember its electron configuration is 2s2 2p6 so if you look at all these uh, atoms that are around uh, neon the question is how can they uh, either gain or lose electrons in such a way that they get a 2s2 2p6 electron configuration or a total of 10 electrons right as, as uh, indicated here well if you're talking about sodium it has 11 electrons so in order to get to neon it has to lose one electron so 2s2 2p6 3s1 is the atom of sodium the ion then loses that 3s1 electron so it just becomes 2s2 2p6 vice versa we're talking about something like fluoride or ox oxygen for example oxygen has uh, originally eight electrons 2s2 2p4 uh, is the valence right there's 1s2 as well remember we're, we're not writing that out here but if we uh, want to make this look like neon then we have to obviously gain two more electrons so that's why it becomes O2 minus as a result okay so if you look at all of these ions here they all have 10 electrons now what's important here is the size uh, of these ions the size of the ions as you can see is not the same and the reason is because the size of the ions of course depends on the relative number of protons and electrons the relative size of the nuclei you know nuclei in these ions versus the electrons that they have right and we talked about this in length in chapter 7 which is this whole idea of trying to determine sizes and other periodic trends uh, based on the effective nuclear charge Z and then the um, principal quantum number you know where where the valence uh, shell lies for these um, species and as you can see here if you're gaining uh, more electrons right originally oxygen only has eight now it has ten electrons it still only has eight protons as indicated by this plus eight charge right here so it has a lot more electrons than protons vice versa if you go to something like magnesium it has more protons than electrons the same number of electrons but a lot more protons so the electrons are attracted to the protons in the nuclei so the size gets smaller versus something like uh, neon which is the atom whereas sodium is bigger because it has a lot more electrons the electrons tend to repel each other a little bit more so that makes the size increase okay so you should be able to s explain really why the sizes have this particular sequence from going from the biggest on this side to the smallest on this side now we, we actually have tabulated the sizes in something uh, you know like a table that's shown here basically so the the sizes that we just I just showed you is for the uh, ions that are isoelectronic with neon but you can see here ions that are isoelectronic with our uh, you know with argon which are all of these guys with Krypton all of these guys and you can see that it's the same pattern you always see things getting bigger uh, bigger big, big you know the biggest starting from here which is the non-metal series before the noble gas and then following the noble gas you have the metals and then they get smaller and so you get these type of series going uh, uh, flanking the noble gases here on both sides okay now I want to kind of close this off by talking about this example and I really you know I don't think this is a very difficult example you should be able to kind of work on it yourself and I would put this on the questionnaire for this particular video but the questions just ask very simple uh, question you know a couple of questions here which is one is give two ions that are isoelectronic with AR 
and then the second part of the question is rank the ions and the argon atom in order of increasing size okay uh, so this would be listed in the questionnaire that follows this video. So you want to, again, maybe pause the video, look back at the, you know, the isoelectronic series that I just showed you in the previous slide and kind of understand how we come about to that, uh, those series and you should be able to answer this question.